This is Marty from Photoshop Art House. I'm going to show you how to transform exterior and interior photos into the look of architectural blueprint drawings. For your convenience, I included a paper texture and a photo of an ultra-modern house for this project. You're welcome to use a different photo if you like. You can find their links in my video's description or project files. I selected this photo because it was taken in forced perspective, causing the vertical lines of the house to appear more angled as they move farther from the center. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to correct the distortion for our drawing. The first step is to copy this layer. Press Ctrl or Command J. Go to Filter and Camera Raw Filter. If you see some red colors in the lightest areas of your photo, don't be concerned about it for this project. This is called the Highlight Clipping Warning. Just click this icon to hide it. To adjust the vertical and horizontal angles in the photo, click the Geometry icon to open the Geometry panel. These are called Upright Adjustments. This icon corrects vertical lines. This level icon straightens lines horizontally and is useful for straightening a crooked horizon. The auto icon applies both leveling and vertical corrections. The guided upright feature allows us to define which lines in a scene should be horizontal or vertical by drawing guides along those lines. The full adjustment is similar to auto, but more extreme. For this example, I'll use the full adjustment. Next, I'll show you how to quickly resolve the empty areas. Click OK at the bottom or press Enter or Return. Hide the bottom layer and open the Polygonal Lasso tool. Enable the Add To icon, which adds a new selection to an existing one. Go outside a lower corner, click the tool, and drag out lines surrounding the empty shape. Reconnect it to the point where we started. We'll see a small circle that lets us know the path is closed. Release the tool, which immediately makes a selection of the path. It's normal not to see the selection outside our photo. Repeat the same steps for the other empty area. Go to Edit and Generative Fill. When you see this window, just click Generate. Photoshop is using AI to fill in those areas. I did a few in-depth tutorials on generative fill, so if you'd like to watch them, I included their links as well. As always, it gives us three initial choices to view. Click on each one to see which one you like the best. Then, we'll merge the generative fill layer with the modified photo under it by pressing Ctrl or Command E. Next, we'll place our photo onto the paper texture. Press Ctrl or Command A to select it, and Ctrl or Command C to copy it. Open the paper texture and press Ctrl or Command V to paste the photo onto it. To resize the photo, open the Transform tool by pressing Ctrl or Command T. Go to a corner and press and hold Alt or Option as you drag it in or out. Then press Enter or Return. We'll be adding a border surrounding the inner perimeter of our blueprint drawing. To ensure the border will be equidistant on every side, open your Move tool and press Ctrl or Command A to select the document. Go to Image and Crop. Then deselect it by pressing Ctrl or Command D. We'll convert it into a smart object so we can modify it non-destructively, which will allow us to adjust any of the filters we'll be adding to it at any time. It'll also allow us to replace our photo with another without having to redo the effects. Click the icon at the upper right of the Layers panel and click Convert to Smart Object. Click the Adjustment Layer icon and click Black and White. Click the lock icon to unlock the paper texture background and drag it to the top of the layers panel. Change its blend mode to linear burn. Make the photo active and go to filter, 
Stylize, and Find Edges. We can adjust the amount of detail and tone in the image by making the black and white adjustment layer active, and in the black and white properties panel, click this icon. I did an in-depth tutorial on the black and white adjustment layer, so if you'd like to watch it, I provided that link as well. When we click on our image, our cursor changes into a scrubby slider. Drag it to the right or left to adjust the brightness of that tone or color that corresponds to the original photo. Next, we'll add the border. Double click an empty area of layer 1 to open its layer style window. Click Inner Glow. Click the box, and when the color picker opens, pick black for its color. The blend mode is normal, the opacity is 100%, and the noise is 0%. The technique can be anything. The source is edge, the choke is 100%, and the size is 50 pixels. The contour is linear, and the range is 50%. Click Stroke. The color is white. Before we adjust its size, make the position inside, the blend mode normal, and the opacity 100%. I'll make its size 47 pixels, but if you find your black outline is too thin or too wide, simply adjust the size amount. If one side of the black outline is hidden, open your Transform tool. If you see this message, it's just letting us know that the Find Edges filter will be temporarily turned off until we're done with the Transform tool. Click OK. Go to a corner and press and hold Alt or Option as you drag it in slightly until you see the black outline around all sides. Next, we'll give it a blue color. Make the top layer active and make a new layer above it. Click the foreground color to open the color picker. In the hexadecimal field, type in 0, 0, 3, 6, A, 5. We'll fill the empty layer with the foreground color by pressing Alt or Option plus Delete. Change its blend mode to screen. Make the paper layer active and click the Adjustment Layer icon. Click Levels. Drag the input black level anywhere between 50 to 55, the input white level to 240, and the input midtones a bit to the left. This is Marty from Photoshop Art House. Thanks for watching.